Hey, hello everybody. I am Aves and today I'm talking about how you can build React applications that are both hybrid in nature, but super duper performant. Let's see how you can do that. So Next.js is this awesome React framework that I believe a couple of years from now would probably be the best way to you know, code with React.js. It's an awesome React framework and it's hybrid enough to fit many, many use cases. Today, what we are going to look at is how you can build client-side rendered or server-side rendered and statically generated websites with React and Next.js. I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but Next.js has this awesome capability where it allows you to select on a page-to-page -page basis how you are going to build your React application. Is this particular page going to be behind a login? Is this something that should be public and should be readable for you know search engine optimization or whatnot. So kind of you know allows you to select which page is client side rendered, which page is rendered by the server, or which page is statically generated or incrementally statically regenerated. Ah, that is a mouthful. Let's see what am I talking about here, right? So a little bit of an introduction before we begin. I am Ahmed Aves and I love writing open source software. I've written hundreds of open source software used by millions of developers. I'm a Google developers expert for web technologies, and I also serve on the Node.js community committee. I use my Twitter account as a mini blog. I share a lot of developer tips and hang out with different developers daily. So if you're on Twitter, let's be friends there. I released this course called VS Code.pro. It's a VS Code power user course that helps developers learn their editors deeply. And now I'm also releasing NodeCLI.com, a NodeCLI-based automation course where I'm teaching everything I know on how you can create automation software using JavaScript using Node.js. Okay, enough about me already. Let's dig in and see what is Next.js, CSR, SSR, and SSC. So what I have done is I have built this funny little demo here where I'm going to show you what is SSR, CSR, or SSC. So let's first go ahead and take a look at what is client-side rendering. So as the name says, everything on client-side rendering is happening mostly on the client side. By the client side, I really mean is your browser. There's a server and your browser is actually the client talking to the server. So when everything is happening on the client side, we call it client-side rendering. Now I want you to just take a look at what I'm going to do here. Focus on the loading state of this entire page. Here we go. I just clicked here and for like 500 milliseconds, there was a loading screen that loaded this entire page. So what happened was there was a request sent through my browser to the server and server served a static, you know, loading state of a page. And then from the client side, React sent out the request to a particular server where it brought information about all of the countries in the world, right? So the loading state kind of got rendered into this page right in front of you. And the same thing is going to happen if I click on any one of these countries' pages. For example, let's go down here and let's maybe click on France, right? So to so take a look, there's going to be a loading state of this page for a minuscule of a second. There is the loading state. And now we have a render page that has information about this country. So this is how client-side rendering works. And this is pretty awesome. If I go back and then come forward, there's not going to be any loading state because I'm using SWR, a library also built by folks behind Next.js. That kind of helps me cache all of the information. It's like SWR has cached the information and Next.js right now is talking to SWR with all the cache data and not really sending any repeated request to my server, right? So let's go back to the CSR page and click here on learning how CSR works with Next.js. In CSR, what happens is that server renders a page without any kind of dynamic data. It's a sort of a blank page that the server sends to your client. And then the client immediately shows that page without any dynamic data. But the page does display a loading state, right? It's loading something because it is missing some dynamic data. And then you can use React.js or Next.js to make all kind of API calls to your dynamic server data, bring that data in, and render that page to the client. So the pros and cons of this approach is that this type of approach is super fast. The page gets displayed immediately. The time to first byte is super awesome. And this is exactly what you do when you are building single page applications. 
but there's a little bit of con side to this. There's like no initial render of the page, right? The initial render of the page might have some static pieces inside, like the menu bar or the sidebar or whatnot, but the content, the dynamic content part is completely missing. And that is also bad for search engine. You know why? Because if you want to optimize your page for search engine, it should render all of the content without needing JavaScript. And I can prove this to you by going to the CSR page. If I open the source of this page and search for, let's say, Canada, you will see there's nothing about that or something like France, nada, zip, zip, right? Because everything is inside of a loading state here. There is no pre-rendered content. The content is going to be rendered using JavaScript. And that is not really SEO friendly, but it is quite performant. So you can use something like this when you are building pages that are behind a page wall, authenticated pages, your dashboard or whatnot, or maybe you know you're building a banking website that needs to validate each request and only show you each request if you are authenticated or whatnot, right? When SEO is completely irrelevant. So this is how CSR works with Next.js. Let's go back and take a look at the second option, which is server-side rendering in Next.js. Now what I want you to do is focus on exactly what is going to happen here. Now I'm going to go and click a server-side render page, right? And it is not going to have any kind of loading state. It is going to be pre-rendered through our server. We are going to get the complete picture here, right? So here we go. I clicked here. We are waiting, we are waiting, we are waiting. And now we have the entire pre-rendered page. So what happened here was the server kind of produced all of this content for us. And we can verify this by looking at the source code, which is by the way, huge, right? For example, if I search for Canada, I'll probably find it in here. Also France, just to be sure, right? So this is what server side rendered page looks like. I'm going to click on this particular, you know, country Canada, and I'm going to show you again how server side is going to render, pre-render this page and send the complete HTML to me. Let's see this thing again. I'm going to click here on Canada. By clicking here, I'm going to ask Next.js to send an API request back to my server, which is going to pre-render a page and send me the HTML and JSON, right? So there we go. We are waiting, we are waiting, and now we have a page. So let's go ahead and see how SSR works with Next.js. So there are like two different ways on how SSR works with Next.js. The first way is the direct page request in which you enter a URL and press enter in your browser. Your browser requests that page from the server and then your client shows that pre-rendered page, right? And the second method here is the client side page request. The client side page request is a little bit different than the direct page request. What happens is when you click an internal link, which is an SSR page, Next.js sends an API request to the server. Server runs the get server side props to kind of form the entire pre-render, the entire page, and sends all of that information as a JSON response to Next.js. And then Next.js uses this JSON response to render your page right on your client. So when we take a look at the pros and cons of this approach, you will see that the dynamic content is readily available when you are using SSR pages. It is good to use SSR when you care about search engine optimization, when you care about giving all content to the search engine without having to use JavaScript, right? And the page has no loading state whatsoever. Whenever you request a page, on each request, it gets re-rendered and you get the complete page, not a loading state, the entire page pre-rendered for you. And that also comes with a little bit of a con that it has a slower time to first byte. We actually saw this right here when I clicked on an SSR page, we had to wait a little bit while the server was kind of working and pre-rendering the page. So the time to first byte of the page was slower than as compared to you know CSR client side rendered pages. And since here server has to do a lot of work, it's also a little bit of a slow rendering for server when you are using SSR. The results cannot be easily cached because they are dynamic results. SSR pages are supposed to be dynamic. And there can also be caching issues. Results cannot be cached without, you know, custom configuration of a CDN because definitely on each request, your server is kind of re-rendering, pre-rendering your page and sending it to you. And SSR pages are sort of incompatible with the libraries that need access to window or document object, right? 
because the page is being rendered on the server inside Node.js, not inside the browser. So there's no global concept of window or you know document inside Node.js. A couple of use cases of SSR include pages that need data that should be fetched on the request time. Another use case is when you have a lot of pages, like you know a million pages, where you cannot think about generating all of these pages statically. You could probably use SSR in that case as well. Or and another interesting use case is when your page has some resource heavy you know, content to it. For example, you're using some sort of AI and ML that cannot be run on a simple laptop or on a cheap smartphone, right? So you want your excellent service to work that thing out and produce and pre-render your pages and send them as sort of pre-rendered HTML or JSON to your users. So like everything, SSR has pros and cons to this approach, right? But there's another really interesting approach when it comes to Next.js. And that, my friend, is called SSG, the static site generation. Let's take a look what a static site generation looks like. SSG means static site generation, where on the build time, you generate all of the pages or some of the pages of your site completely statically. And these static pages can be cached in an excellent way. Let's take a look on how that works. Also, if you look closely, you will see that this page is going to load very quickly. Here we go. Here I click, and there we have it. There was no loading state because this is a pre-generated page. This page was statically generated. Right now, this page has no dynamic components whatsoever. There is no loading state, and it is completely static. Users of this website could be sitting anywhere, and I could use something like Vercel to distribute this particular static page through a CDN, through Vercel, on the edge and serve these pages very quickly. There's no compute going on. It is just super, super fast. You can also experience how fast static website pages are. When I click here, take a look, boom. This is how fast this page is loading and it has all the data inside of it. Let's take a look at the source of this page. If I search for Canada, you will see all of the information is right there. This is a pre-generated page. It has all the information. It is not going to be generated on runtime. It was generated on build time when my site was being built by the server. And now it is being served completely statically to my audience. Let's go to SSG and learn how SSG works with Next.js. So there are two approaches to SSG when it comes to Next.js. The first one is the easy approach, the basic static site generation, where you set fallback to false and give Next.js a couple of paths that it goes ahead and generates statically. The server generates these pages on the build time and it builds these pages with or without dynamic data. It doesn't really matter. And when these pages are generated, the client is able to immediately serve these pages through an edge, through a CDN. The second approach is a little bit more complex, but it is as much as interesting. You see, we call this approach incremental static regeneration. So it's an incremental static site approach. In, by incremental, what we mean is that we are not going to regenerate all of the static pages of the website. Imagine a site that has 100,000 you know, products, an e-commerce site. We can't really go ahead and generate all of these 100,000 pages. The build time is going to be huge. It's going to be days, right? So incrementally generating or regenerating is what we are going to do here. Let's see how this approach works. So what happens is that on build time, server starts generating pages that have defined paths inside of Next.js. So a part of your website could be statically generated and a part of your website could be incrementally static, right? And when these pages are generated, your client starts to immediately serve these pages to your user. But what happens if a user requests a non-generated page that had an undefined path? Or let's say that you went to your backend and you created a new product, a new product on your store. To display that product, either you can regenerate your entire website statically or you could use incremental static regeneration. Now let's imagine that a user requested a non-generated page that had an undefined path. Next.js is not going to return you a 404 here. What it is going to do is Next.js will serve a fallback loading state, sort of like what it does on you know, client-side rendering. And while Next.js is doing that, Next.js will send an API request to the server server will statically generate this page in the background. And as soon as it is generated, Next.js will serve this page to the user. 
But one more thing would happen. Next year, I will also add this page, the path of this page to the pre-rendered pages list. So on a subsequent request to this page, if a new user comes to the same page, the server is not going to regenerate this page. It is going to use the old page that was generated for the first user and just serve that to you completely statically. And this approach is super amazing. You know, you could build a static version of Twitter, you know, the hundreds of millions of tweets only by getting a particular tweet ID, you would generate that particular tweet as an HTML file on the server. And for each subsequent request, that particular tweet ID is going to be just that HTML file served completely statically to your users, right? And this kind of blows my mind. And this is the kind of thing that makes Next.js super duper amazing. So the pros and cons of building your site statically are huge. Like your pages are incredibly fast. Your pages are built once and served always through a CDN. Your pages get cached for a long, long time. Unless until you are using the incremental approach, your pages have no loading state at all. And even with the incremental part, the loading state is shown only to one user once. This approach is great for SEO because all of your pages are super fast and they contain all of the information without using JavaScript or whatnot. And there is no server needed. You basically only need a CDN to serve completely static pages. And finally, this approach is awesome because you get to pre-generate the pages ahead of a user request on the build time, not on the runtime, right? So a couple of cons of this approach are like slow server side builds, but that can be solved through incremental site builds. And if you have a huge site, not really big, like tens of thousands of pages, but imagine hundreds of pages, the regeneration of all of these pages, even if you had a typo somewhere, takes a long time, right? And finally, since these pages are built on a server, they're sort of incompatible with libraries that need access to window or document object, similar to SSR. And there can be a lot of use cases for something like this. You know, your marketing pages, your blog pages, even your entire e-commerce site can be static using either basic static generation or the incrementally static regeneration of your pages. And when you're deciding whether or not to use SSG, SSR, or CSR, remember when your pages are infrequently updated, let's say a page that hardly ever changes, you should think about generating it statically using SSG. The last thing I'm going to show you here is how much time it takes to completely render a CSR, SSR, or SSG page. So let's open up our dev tools, go to the network tab, and I'm going to refresh this client side rendered page. Now, if we take a look at the timing, it took about 100 milliseconds to produce this page, right? Because the server kind of served a completely blank page without any you know, dynamic data whatsoever. Now, if we do the same thing with SSR, Let's refresh. The same page with SSR took about 800 milliseconds to be loaded, right? So it's the comparison is like 100 milliseconds versus 800 milliseconds, right? So it took about eight times more time to produce this SSR page because this was completely pre-rendered. It had all the information in it. Now let's compare both of these to an SSG, a statically generated page. For that, I'm going to refresh again. Let me find SSG here, go to the timing API, and it took about 124 milliseconds to load this SSG page. CSR is super fast because it is really doing nothing. It is kind of serving the loading state of a page or some parts of that page are static, but the dynamic content is completely missing. SSR is relatively slower of all these three options since it pre-renders your entire content before serving it. And SSG is super duper fast. It's about 125 milliseconds of pre-generated content that was generated when your site was being built in the, on the build time, not when it was requested, not on the request time. So there you go. This is how CSR, client-side rendering, SSR, server-side rendering, and SSG, static site generation works with Next.js. I hope you enjoyed this talk. And if you are interested in this particular application that I'm building to demonstrate the difference between these pages, I'm giving it the finishing touches and I'm going to launch it pretty soon. For that, go ahead and follow me on Twitter, Mr. Ahmed West on Twitter, and I'll see you there. Peace.